Hey guys, so today I want to get started with a too much jibber jabber. Uh, this isn't uh, I just shaved tube, nor is it I flew over the ocean tube. No, it's book tube. So let's get started. Today I want to review one of my favorite books of all time. It's a book I love recommending to friends or to anyone who comes into the shop. The book I'm talking about is none other than Wilkie Collins's. The Moonstone. T.S. Eliot describes this book as the first and best English detective novel. It was a bestseller in its time, uh, which makes it a great recommend because not only does it have the canonical heft of a classic, but it's also this rip-roaring page-turning adventure. So let me tell you how this book opens. I wouldn't call these spoilers, I just want to ease you into the story. <laughs> first let me tell you that the story is narrated by multiple narrators. There's a hilarious, narcissistic English butler, an even funnier, uh, super religious lady who uh, leaves uh, pamphlets for everyone, pamphlets for a church everywhere in people's uh, closets under their couch. It's really funny. There's also an opium addict uh, and more. Um, but the book opens uh, with a prologue. It's a letter written by a Colonel Herncastle about 60 years before the rest of the book starts. And he's writing from India. And he's just learnt of a precious stone called the Moonstone that is housed in a nearby temple. So, being a British imperialist, he does what all British imperialists do best. He goes, burns down that temple, and steals the stone for himself. And then, in the most cinematic of openings, uh, a burning uh, Indian monk, covered in flames, looks out to the colonel and says, You'll be forever cursed until you return the Moonstone. And so begins one of the greatest classics of English literature. You can see from that description alone all the books that Collins's uh, book uh, casts a shadow over. I'm talking about Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie, and even Indiana Jones. It all starts here. Over the years, the book has been praised for its uh, depiction of domestic servants, and I'm pretty sure I'm wrong about this, but I can't think of an example of within the Victorian novel or beforehand of domestic servants having so much authority and control over the narrative as Gabriel Betteridge does uh, when he resumes the story following the prologue of the book. Um, when I think of Jane Austen, which isn't exactly Victorian, just a little bit beforehand, um, servants are there, and they do play a role, but none of them have names. It's like, it's not upstairs, stairs, downstairs in Jane Austen, it's just upstairs. <laughs> the book was also prized for its depiction of opium addiction, which readers at the time didn't know were actually based off of uh, Wilkie Collins's own personal experiences. In fact, he had such a strong opium addiction that as he got older, he began seeing hallucinations of a doppelganger version of himself, which he referred to as Ghost Wilkie. Hello, Wilkie. It's Ghost Wilkie. Ah! That's why you shouldn't do opium. Anyways, I give this book five out of five stars. It is a classic, so after the prologue, it does take a little bit to get back into, but once it gets going, it's really really good. I'd also recommend this edition published by the Penguin English Library. I like it for multiple reasons. One, it comes with a cute little portrait of Wilkie. And two, um, there are no footnotes in this book, which most editions of classics, usually because I guess they're used for scholarly purposes, come with footnotes. But I'm happy they're not here because that way I don't feel bad about not reading them. Let me know if you've read Collins's book, if you've read any of his other books, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, um, whatever, hit me up in the comments below, um, and until next time, happy reading.